In this video, we're going to go over the recall exercise, teaching your puppy or adult dog to come to you. Now, we're going to do uh, show you kind of a warm-up way of doing this, and then we're going to actually show you the exercise that, uh, that we practice in class. Now, the warm-up is really just to teach the puppy what the cue is, as well as uh, warming up and conditioning them that coming to us is a good and rewardable thing. Now, a uh, quick little note um, at home, every time your puppy comes to you, you're watching TV, your puppy walks up to you, mark it. Say yes, and then pet your puppy when you didn't ask for it. The more you do that, the more your puppy is likely to come to you because it's a rewardable uh, activity. When you're doing this, you want to keep uh, short practice sessions. And at first, what we're going to do is, uh, and, and you also need to come up with a cue. I like using the word here because it's a little bit more distinct, but you can say come or hear or attention or whatever words you want. Just pick one word. We often assign 10 different cues to get a puppy to come. We say their name, come, here, come here, over here, here boy, dog's name, dog's nickname, whistle, tap my thigh, and something else. That's 10 different different words for their puppy to listen to, that's going to slow down their learning process. So just pick one word and stick with it. All right, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and show Ollie, uh, excuse me, show Timmy here. Tim! Yes, he's like, well, you're not giving me treats, so I'm going to walk away. So for the warm-up, what we're going to do is I'm going to basically say, I'm going to use the word here. 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 Now you saw at first I was holding the treat out as a lure. Now I'm kind of keeping the treat off the side. Here. 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 So you notice I'm getting him moving in all sorts of different directions, and that's really important. Um, so you now he's pretty established and he's warmed up. So I'm going to let him walk around, and we're going to be using uh, our senior instructor, Anna, and our behavior expert, uh, Laura, is going to be helping us out with this one. So when you're doing this, you want to practice with at least three people. If you only have two people, the puppy starts pogoing back and forth to the other person. You can do that, but we really want it to be an intentional act. Um, the second thing is uh, when we're doing this, you want to make sure the environment is free of a lot of stimulus. You don't want somebody eating Cheetos or cooking stuff in the kitchen or any sort of smells is going to attract your puppy's attention. Also, you don't want to compete with your puppy's nose, not only for this, but really for any exercise. You're almost always going to lose. So if your puppy's sniffing, wait for them to stop sniffing and then go ahead and ask them to come over. Now, when you're doing this, you want to start off in about a triangle. Now, if you have more than three people, you can have use whatever geometric shape you want, but you want to start with, out with people about seven feet apart. And uh, gradually, you'll make this uh, a circle bigger and bigger as you're practicing. But at first, you want to make it pretty easy. Now, I like to, when I do this, I like to hold my arm like this. Now you notice I have a 90 degree bend in my elbow. I have a flat palm, palm open and facing the sky. I'm going to put a treat in the middle of my hand. Now I'm doing it sideways, but for, if the, the camera is the puppy, I want to be pointing at the puppy before I call them. Now the puppy already, we just worked on establishing a cue of here. So I'm going to try to use that, but it's awfully early. So Tim might not have that cue yet. So if I say the word and he doesn't come to me, then I'm going to say his, vo his name and I'm holding this out to him. And, uh, and if he doesn't come for that, then I can make a kissing sound. We call it a positive interrupter, like <laughs> You see how that got his attention. Yes. All right, so what we're, now one other little thing. I'm gonna go ahead and uh, have Anna call him real quick. Just say Tim. Tim, Timmy. There you go. So now he's away. I'm gonna show you how you can use your hand as a lure to get him, um, to, get him to come to you. Go give him a treat. Tim. The lower you go, the more accessible it is for the dog and the more attention you're going to catch. Now first, as soon as the puppy comes to us, we're going to, give them, we're going to mark and say yes and give him that treat. Eventually, we're going to do the motion I just did to, uh, to make the puppy go into a sitting motion. So we're going to go ahead and practice this. When you practice this, I like to practice with each person having about you know, 7 to 15 treats. You want to keep the practice session short, 2 or 3 minutes. And again, you want to practice in a, a lot of different rooms in your house. But again, at first, you want about 7 feet apart and no distractions. So let's go ahead and practice a little bit. Let's see how Timmy does. Now, we also want to have one person who's in charge. So I'm going to be the one dictating to tell who the next person who's going to call Tim. We don't want to have two people call at the same time. So now he went to Laura, so I'm going to have Anna go ahead and call him first. She's just going to say here first. Here. Now she's going to say his name. Timmy. And then she's going to lower the treat. Now, Tim is advanced, so we can go ahead and put him in the sit. But a lot of times you just want to go, Tim. Yes. 
All right, so we're gonna, what the order is if we've established a keyword, we're going to say here. If that doesn't work, yes, I'll reward that sit. Then we're going to say their name. If that doesn't work, we're going to make the kissing sound. And you can also, at any one of these, you can lower the treat, and just like that, you'll get the puppy to come to you. Let's go ahead and have Laura try with a here. Here. Let's, yeah. There you go. Good. Anna? See that little bounce in a step? That's what we're looking for. Tim, here. Anna? Tim? Here. Tim? Now, if your puppy is jumping up like that, then I would just go to delivering the treats for a while, just get them conditioned to coming up to it. I'm gonna have Laura go ahead and do it. So we're gonna call here first. If that doesn't work, we're gonna say their name. And if that doesn't work, we're gonna use the kissing sound and then lower the treat. Now, Laura could also lower the treat at that point. And you can also use that sort of sound. It works good for horses as well. Tim, here. Good. Anna? So if the puppy is staring at one person, that person should cross their arms and look up the ceiling and just freeze and become boring. And then the puppy has to go to who's calling him. All right, so now you see I've given him a lot of treats. We're doing a lot of training. So Laura's going to go ahead and call him now. Here. Now right there, he's about to go over to Laura anyways. If that happens, you might want to just go ahead and uh, have that person not do it. It's okay if they do, and especially at first. We want to reward just him coming to us. But eventually we want it to be a, an intentional act. Here, Tim. Yes. Actually, if I'm marking, if I'm, if I'm marking, at first I would mark when he arrives. If I'm marking for him to sit, then I'm going to wait for him to sit. Then I'm going to mark that, and then I'm going to go ahead and give him the treat. Anna's going to go ahead and use a here. Here. And then she's going to say his name. Here. See how he looked at her hand? As soon as he saw that hand, then he deviated and went to her. So when you would do, want to do this, you want to, again, keep this really short and sweet. So he came back to me, so now Laura's going to call. And I'm going to have Anna and Laura practice calling him back and forth as I kind of wrap this one up. So when you're doing this, what you want to do is you're going to make sure that you're practicing, you're having success. Um, eventually, you do want to condition your puppy to stay in that sit or to go into that sit when people come over to you because that's a pretty polite way of calling your puppy. Um, and uh, at first, you're going to do this with we're about seven feet apart. Then we're going to move a couple feet back until eventually we're on opposite sides of the room. Then eventually, we're going to have one person outside of the room, just right outside the room. Then eventually, two people are outside the room. Then three people outside the room, and the dog's going to different rooms each time. Then eventually, we'd like to have one person up stairs, one person downstairs, you're basically elongating the, the duration or the distance that you're calling your puppy from. The next last stage would be to do this outside. And when you go outside, give your puppy an opportunity to go and sniff around first. Don't try to just have them uh, you know, do it immediately and never try to compete with their nose. Once they're done with their sniffs, go back to a seven foot triangle and then gradually work your way back further and further. Again, this should take multiple practice sessions. This is a really important cue. You're going to want your puppy to come when you ask it to come. So I would make sure that you're practicing this for uh, a good three, uh, two to three minutes, probably three or more times a day for a week solid. And by the end of that week, you should be able to be transitioned outside. Now, if you don't have a yard, you're in an apartment, uh, you can look for like sometimes baseball diamonds are completely enclosed a fence. You can actually uh, close the fence and practice that there. Um, you could also, if you have family or friends, obviously use their yards. Tennis courts also make a good opportunity to do that. If you're using public facilities, though, please make sure you clean up if your puppy does have any accidents there. Otherwise, we won't be able to use those facilities. Uh, but keep on practicing this one a lot because this is really important. Now, what if your puppy is not listening to you and there's something that's distracting and it's going after it? If you chase after your puppy, you can often chase it into traffic or into situations. So what I want to do is I'm going to show you real quick what I call an emergency recall. Now, I talked about this in other videos. A high-pitched voice is going to be very attractive to your puppies uh, uh, to get your puppy's attention. So Puppies like to chase and be chased. So if I want to get my puppy to come to me, uh, I'm going to have Laura call him one more time. Here. There we go. So if I want to get him to come to me, I'm going to say a very excited voice, I'm going to run away from him. Puppy, 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 puppy! 
If you run after your puppy, you might chase them into traffic because they might think we're playing, oh, the game, you're just chasing me, so I should run away from you. So if that's the case, your puppy's moving away from you and they're moving towards danger, stop. Say their name in a very excited voice. You can jump up and down and be really excited and then turn and run the opposite direction. Dogs are usually going to look at, uh, for us, if we're trying to point what direction our face and our feet are pointing. So if our face and feet are pointing towards the dog, they're not going to understand uh, to uh, come to us. So now if I turn and I go, puppy, 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 we get our puppy coming to us. We've moved him away from the danger. You don't get him to go into traffic. Well, this is my cute little buddy, Tim. Sit. And this is how you can practice or teach your puppy the recall. <laughs> Quest, you are a goofball. <laughs>